Just like in animals, plants have different levels of organisation, with lots of similar cells combining to form tissues, different types of tissues combining to form organs, and then multiple organs combining to form organ systems. To see how these fit together, we're going to take a look at the structure of a leaf, which itself is an organ. And along with the stem and roots, it forms an organ system that's function is a transport of substances around the plant. This image here is a cross section of a leaf, as though you sliced it from top to bottom and are looking inside. Before we explore these structures though, it's worth considering its function. Leaves are the site of photosynthesis, which we'll cover in another video, but basically it requires lots of carbon dioxide and water in order to make sugars. The water comes from the soil and is transported to the leaves by the roots and xylem, as we'll see in the next video. But the carbon dioxide diffuses directly into the leaf from the outside air, through lots of little holes called stomata. In fact, each of the leaves will have thousands of these stomata, and they're scattered through the lower epidermis, which is a layer of epidermal tissue. Once the carbon dioxide has diffused through these little holes, it moves up the leaf and enters the spongy mesophyll tissue, which has lots of air gaps between the cells, so that the gas can easily diffuse through to the next layer, which we call the palisade mesophyll layer. This is where most of the photosynthesis happens, and so the palisade cells are packed full of chloroplasts. Above this, we have the upper epidermis, which is another layer of epidermal tissue. These cells are almost transparent though, as the sunlight needs to be able to pass through them to get to the chloroplasts in the palisade cells beneath. And once photosynthesis has finally produced the sugar molecules, they're carried to the rest of the plant by these green tubes here, which we call the phloem. Now the main problem that leaves face is water loss. The xylem, which runs next to the phloem here, continually brings water up from the roots for the palisade cells to use in photosynthesis. But that water can be lost from both the top and bottom of the leaf. To reduce this water loss, the leaf has a waxy cuticle on top, which is basically a thin waterproof layer of lipids that the water can't get through. When it comes to the bottom of the leaf, the main problem is the stomata, as the water will diffuse out of any gaps really easily. The leaves need these holes though, so they can get the carbon dioxide that they need. As a compromise, the leaves keep their stomata open for as short a time as possible, so that they can maximise carbon dioxide absorption, but minimise water loss. In order to achieve this delicate balance, each stoma, which is what we call a single stomata, is formed from the gap between two guard cells. When the plant has lots of water, so it doesn't need to worry so much about conserving it, the guard cells will be well hydrated, which we call turgid and this makes the gap between them larger, allowing more carbon dioxide to diffuse through. On the other hand, when the plant is short of water, the guard cells will lose water due to osmosis, and they'll become flaccid. This in effect closes the stomata, meaning that the plant no longer takes in carbon dioxide, but more importantly, it will conserve its water vapor. Another adaptation is that the guard cells are sensitive to light, so they close at nighttime, when photosynthesis isn't taking place, and they don't need carbon dioxide. And the reason that most of the stomata are on the underside of the leaves, rather than the top, is that the lower surface is more shaded, which makes it cooler, and so it means that less water will evaporate. One last tissue we need to mention is meristem tissue, which is basically the plant form of stem cells. They're found at the growing tips of the roots and shoots, and can differentiate into loads of different cell types so that the plant can grow. We've actually already taken a look at Mary's stems in our video on stem cells if you want to check it out. We'll also put down the link to our active transport video which covers the structure and function of root hair cells. And that's everything for this video. If you enjoyed it then please do give us a like and we'll see you next time.